and welcome to Barcelona for MWC 2024, where I am delighted to be joined by Partha Sitala. He's president of the Cloud Business Unit at Rakuten Symphony. Partha, thank you so much for joining us. So how does the cloud native approach differ from traditional telecom transformation strategies? So a few things about cloud native. First, it is software driven. That's one very key, key criteria. Second is it's automated, so which is not traditionally what you see. In a traditional telecom deployment, there's a lot of manual processes. There's a lot of manual things that are done to bring up services, manage them once they're brought up. When it comes to cloud native, first you're deploying everything in software on commodity hardware, and then you're figuring out how to do everything in an automated manner, right from deployment to the man life cycle management of these. So that's a big difference. And from that drives the other things, right, which are cost savings because of TCO reduction. Uh, in terms of service availability and uptime, you see much higher service availability and uptime. There's a lot of new transformative things that you can bring in with cloud native that is not possible with traditional deployment. So what factors influence the choice of platforms for cloud native telecom transformations? I would say when it comes to selection of platform, a few things need to be washed out for, right? One is the class of workloads you intend to run. Because in, in telecom operators, you have a wide variety of applications that are run. Traditionally, people only think about the network functions, right? Which is your RAN and your core and all that stuff. But in, in supporting these applications are other things which are more storage heavy, for example, right? It could be, you know, in the packet core, you could have databases that are storing, you know, specific information about the subscribers and things like that, right? So the platform has to support both network-centric as well as you know, storage-centric workloads. And the platform also has to provide the right SDK so that you can automate your user workflows that are very specific to different operators. Right? So I think the platform selection has to be based on both of these things, the variety of applications and the SDK that enables automation after that. Can you explain maybe the concept behind automation and hyper-automation and its significance in cloud-native telecom transformation? So automation essentially means you're writing scripts. And instead of humans doing things, you have scripts that are essentially doing certain things. It could be as simple as deploying an application or a network function instead of humans doing it even. Hyper-automation is a different thing. Right? Hyper-automation essentially means, in addition to automating it, can the system actually learn what's happening and derive you know, certain things, maybe things are failing, right? And automatically take an action. So you're not just writing a script to you know, make the human work go away, but essentially writing something that is monitoring things and it is you know, what you call as an automated loop trying to fix itself, right? So that's the definition between hyper-automation and automation. And beyond traditional network functions, what new capabilities are enabled by cloud native architectures and how has it evolved throughout the years? Yeah, so network functions obviously are the first applications that you know, a telco operator you know, brings onto the cloud native platform. But once you bring in, the nature of cloud native platforms is that it enables other use cases, right? other edge use cases. One classic use case would be, let's say CDN at the edge, right? The content delivery network at the edge. Caching, right? Or essentially running games closer to where the end users are. Now, all of those kind of new applications are now possible if you pick the platform, right? Which is cloud native. And that was not traditionally possible with a traditional network because there are all, each deployment is fine tuned for a very specific application. With this, you have a common platform and you can bring in other types of uh, use cases. Can you share insights or background of current engagements explaining the need for the cloud native directive? So, I mean, I would say that I mean, the operators that we talk to or the customers that we talk to, I mean, we, we start with network functions, obviously, right? Whether it is the RAN's DUCU or it is the packet core or IMS, whatever, right? All that stuff. But beyond that, we also are seeing some of the telco operators now embracing, you know, AI ML. Uh, to study what's happening in their network and try to optimize their operations, right? So that's another class of workloads that we are actually starting to see quite a bit uh, in the deployments that we're seeing. And finally, what message do you have for telecom operators who may be still hesitant to start their cloud native transformation? And what are the first steps they should be taking? I would say they have to make that leap because cloud native is the future. And the reason I say that is of course, there are some early adopters who have so seen the benefits of it, 
but you are seeing a lot of vendors now shipping their software in a cloud native manner, which means that sooner or later, it will become an economic problem, right? If you're not essentially going with the vendors, how they are deploying their software, or how they are shipping their software, right? Now, the second part of your question is how do they start, right? What are the one, two, three things they can do? I would say that first, figure out a platform that enables the wide variety of applications. If you just go with a cloud native platform that is just for one class of workloads, it becomes very hard to basically take the same platform both from a licensing point of view, as well as a skill set point of view that you build within an organization to manage it. So I think pick something that works for different classes of workloads, but start small. Start with one workload, but pick a platform that caters to multiple such workloads. That would be the right starting point. Bartha, thank you very much.